The other week, Jeff Vogel from Spiderweb Software went on a really weird midlife crisis rant about how there are too many indie games. This bothers me because I think the huge number of indie games is one of the best things to happen in recent years. From the beginning, this channel has been a really weird mixture of topics that interest me. So that means programming languages and in-depth computing topics and computer games, especially computer games that revolve around programming. And for some reason, I've also thrown in accounting and bookkeeping topics. Now, a friend of mine, Pete, always pokes fun at me for playing so many programming games. Why, he asks, would you want to play games that are just like work? I don't have a good answer for that question, but it is a thing that I enjoy. Well, today it's going to get even worse because I have discovered that there is a rich vein of games about accounting and bookkeeping. Let's take a look at a couple of them. First, let me show you Red Flags. Red Flags was created by Singapore Management University's School of Accountancy in support of a class about accounting controls and fraud prevention. Let's take a look. In terms of gameplay, the game is clearly inspired by Lucas Pope's fantastic Papers, Please. In that game, you play a customs agent working for an authoritarian nation, inspecting passports and other identity documents at the border. In Red Flags, you're a junior accountant auditing the books of a business. Each level, you're looking for a certain type of fraud. You're intended to flag each problem you find and then submit your work to be checked by a senior accountant. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we have a few UI elements here. The angry old man in the upper right is the senior accountant who we're going to submit our work to. The young associate in the upper left is our buddy who will give us hints if we want. I'm going to tap on the files on the left here and we get some instructions. Check whether invoices are marked paid if checks are already sent out. If they're not marked with stamps, they run a risk of being paid fraudulently. Okay, so we're gonna tap on the thing. We see invoices, paid invoice. Number two, we can zoom in here and look like that. Let's see there's a bank check. There's a bunch of items here. We've got a grand total of 37.44. And it says it's paid and there's a bank check. The bank check doesn't show me the amount, so I don't know if that's intentional or not. So I'm going to I'm going to flag it. Wait, can I? How do I? Oh, and on the bottom here, we don't have a paid stamp. That's what they're asking me to to flag. So this one has a problem, we throw it over to the boss. Red flag missed. You missed some of the red flags. Here are the following. Missing paid stamp in 02. I thought I was flagging it. Maybe I need, oh, I know what I needed to do. This is a UI problem here. I need to, you need to actually tap on whatever it is you think is wrong. So this one's fine. So let's go ahead and approve it. Right, the boss doesn't complain. This one's missing the stamp, so I actually need to tap there. And there's our little red flag. We're gonna red flag that. And welcome to your exciting job in audit accounting. This is this is the rest of your life. You've made terrible decisions. You've become an accountant. Uh, you really should have gone into technology, or you should have opened your own business up. Oh, I forgot to tap again, so now my boss is going to yell at me. Um, uh, in this game, there actually aren't any consequences for getting it all wrong, uh, other than angry emails from your boss. In some of the other accounting games that I found, and we may look at one or two of those later, uh, get too many wrong and you will get fired. So not at all like real life in that sense. Now there are other frauds we're going to be trying to detect. So let's get to the end of the day here. We are graded. <laughs> we get a bonus, even though we made... No, that's weird. I, I definitely made a few mistakes, but this seems to have missed it. Let's go on to the next level. And just like that, I'm a junior auditor. So again, exactly like real life, promotions come this quickly. We have to look at how employees are compensated and 
look for signs of fraud. So we have employment contracts. Uh, we've got a guaranteed performance bonus and a non-guaranteed performance bonus. I believe it's the non-guaranteed performance bonuses that incent people to commit fraud. I don't know why, but apparently that's what Singapore Management University thinks. Um, and there's some threshold of sales below which um, the performance bonus is viewed as an incentive to fraud. So I'm going to just guess at this point. Uh, I'm going to guess that it's 2%. Let's hand this over. Apparently I was right. Okay, guaranteed, guaranteed, that's fine. Non-guaranteed, non-guaranteed, that's not fine. And the boss agrees. And then we can go through and do this for several hours. Again, very shockingly realistic uh, depiction of audit. All right, so what are we going to, what type of fraud are we going to see today? Check that the shipping address corresponds to the company address. This is to make sure that we're not drop shipping the goods to somewhere else. Okay, so we have the customer data. And we have a bill of lading. The bill of lading says it's 145 things on 2017. Customer data. All right. Well, this doesn't look ships from S to S335863. All right. And that's where August Bakery is. There's also Sims Pie. Well, I'm going to, you know, again, I'll assume that that's correct. That's going to Sims Pie. Oh, I see. So each one of these, we're just checking literally the zip code here. Those all look correct. That's on page one. Page two, that looks correct. Yeah, all those look great to me, unless there's something I'm not seeing. So let's prove it. Give it to our angry boss. And that was correct. Okay. You know, I actually played this. Okay, so here we could see that the shipping address differs between these two companies. So that's a problem. So already you can see that this is a little more involved than that first level. And that's a theme. They're going to be introducing more and more complicated uh, types of fraud as we go on. Oh, I missed one there. Okay. And just, oh, I missed one. Oh, performance review. All right, what do we got today? Ah, this is the, uh, the oh my fraud level. We're going to check that there's a segregation of duties between approval of cash receipts and bank reconciliation. All right, let's take a look. So it's actually, okay, this is fine. The question is who approved the check or who wrote it and who reconciled the bank statement. And since Evelyn's re Evelyn reconciled, oh, UI is a little bit squidgy here. Okay, Evelyn, Jason, Juliet, and Evangeline. Yeah, this all looks fine. Unless I'm missing something. Edwin. Ah, so here we got Jason writing a check that he reconciled. So that's a problem. Oh, he did it again. So this one's already not going to pass. And Marcus is also being fast and loose here, so we're going to red flag that. Samantha and Juliet, Lucas and Juliet. Juliet's been busy. And that's fine. Ah, this is the level I was thinking of. Check the legitimacy of the P.O. box. All right, now this is a little bit of a problem because you need to probably know how what Singaporean addresses look like. Uh, so I'm, again, just going to take a guess. 
place where the office address is a P.O. box and then the delivery address is a different P.O. box. So I'm going to just flag that as a problem. Let's see if our boss yells at me. Oh, that was correct. Okay. So let's take a look. We got again the same sort of thing going on here and here. Now, what if the delivery address is a I guess the delivery address should never be a PO box for an invoice, really. So we can go on and look at other types of fraud as well. But the thing I wanted to say here is Red Flags is alarmingly polished. Uh, you clearly need to have an interest in the subject matter beyond, uh, oh, look at that. I'm a senior auditor after doing only about five levels of, of work. Um, you clearly need to have an interest in the subject matter. Uh, I don't think it's going to be for everyone, but Red Flags is free and it is on the, uh, the Apple and Android app stores. So if this looks like something you want to try, you should check it out. Now there are, believe it or not, not just one accounting game. This is actually an entire subgenre. So what do I mean by an entire subgenre? Well, I got into a bit of an argument online, I know, shocking, with someone who was nonplussed and upset by the huge number of indie games out there. Well, I love that there are weird games. I love that there are just thousands of games about topics that I may not be interested in, but someone clearly loves. And I went to itch.io, which is a site for publishing independent games, small games, and I searched for accounting. And what I found is, dudes, there are hundreds upon hundreds of them. And they range in seriousness from things that are clearly just a joke or a simulator to things that are very story-based, to things that are actually adventure games with a thin accounting theme. There are so many that I could legitimately cover an accounting game per week and never actually reach the end. So if people want me to, to kind of go and do dives on these, I will. But for today, let me just show you one. I want to show you Shadow Ledger 7 DRL. The game can be played right in your browser. We have, once we start playing, 60 seconds to audit this document. So we use W, A, S, and D to move around. Ah, I see. So each move that we make is going to deduct time. I did not realize that was part of the thing. So now I found an item here, a uh, pizza Two topping pizza for $99, that's clearly fraud. I'm going to, let's see, controls R, F to flag the transaction. All right, so what else do we got here? Uh, every, there's some other very expensive pizzas right here. We're gonna flag those. Uh, this $75 pizza is fine. It's a birthday party for 25, so that sounds about right. We've got an oil change that is $1.45 rather than $14.50. That was probably a data entry error. Everything else looks okay to me. I wonder about this discount, discounted oil change on line seven and also this one on line one and 24. All right, let's go ahead and submit this. How do I submit it? G, submit sheet for review. Oh, we missed a $99 pizza. We have flagged 96% of the transactions. We need 90% to go on to the next level. Please continue the good work on this next spreadsheet. All right, so now it looks like we've got treated lumber for $65. That looks at least consistent with the other ones. We have remote door opener and automatic blinds from Cogmind Automation. We have oak trinkets being made by Urist's Excavation. 
Well, I think that sounds like a problem. Why is a miner in Dwarf Fortress making oak trinkets? So I'm going to flag that one. Uh, this might be wrong. We'll see. I'm going to flag all of the oak trinket ones. A grid bug has caused your computer to freeze for 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah, I don't see anything else here that really terrifies me. Let's submit it. I missed one for 450. Ah, uh, the value is wrong. Okay, I still met. I can go on to the next level. Highlight by cost. That cost time. All right, let's do that. Highlight by cost. Oh, that's nice. All right, so we see medium handbags are $1,000. Are there large handbags? Do that. I just don't trust these army ants. I'm going to flag them on general principles. All right, well, I think this is the level where we're probably going to lose because all of these other things look right to me other than the army ants. But I'm sure I'm missing something. Less than, more than a small vase. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and submit. All right, so what happened here? The price for the large vase is wrong, and the price for the Bilbo's, the large bags, is wrong. I don't know how I would have known that. I don't think there's enough context clues here for me to know what these prices should have been in the first place. So, accounting games, they exist. There are way more of them than you think. And if you'd like to see more, leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been, I guess it's both gaming like it's 1979 and counting like it's 1479. Thanks for watching. <laughs>